In this video, we're going to look at a very fundamental but important case of a derivative function. We're going to examine the derivative of a linear function. So recall that the derivative of a function is its tangent slope function. So what do we mean by this? If you had the graph of a function f, and you had the graph of its derivative function f prime, then the tangent slope of f at x is equal to the value of the derivative f prime at x. So in other words, if say f prime of x were equal to negative 3 quarters, then at that same argument x in the original function, you would know that the tangent slope was negative 3 quarters. In previous videos, we've seen that if f of x equals x squared, then f prime of x is equal to 2x, or in Leibniz notation, the derivative of x squared is 2x. And if g of x is equal to x cubed, then g prime of x is equal to 3x squared, or in Leibniz notation, the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. And we're going to ask the question, what is the derivative of a linear function? In other words, if f of x had the formula mx plus b, what's the formula for f prime of x? Or in Leibniz notation, what's the derivative of mx plus b with respect to x? Now, if you look at the graph of a linear function, you're just going to get a line, of course, and it's going to have slope m. So if you ask yourself what the tangent slope should be at the argument x, well, intuitively, it seems pretty clear that the tangent slope should also be m. So at the argument x, you would expect the value of the derivative to be m. But of course, this should apply no matter what argument you choose. And so we very much expect the derivative function to be constant. It should have the constant value m, where m is the slope of the original function. Now that's the intuitive way to look at this. But we should go back to the official definition of derivative to verify that uh, everything is uh, what we think it is. So let's remember the theory behind tangent slope. To find the tangent slope at the argument x, we calculate the secant slope on an interval with one endpoint at x. So we're going to choose another endpoint off to the side and calculate the slope of this so-called secant line. Now let's just give this argument a name. We'll be rather vague and just put a little empty box here for the name of this variable because we don't want to get too caught up in the details of what we call it because the theory is going to look the same. We need to calculate this secant slope. And then we're going to calculate the limiting value of this slope as the other endpoint approaches x. Now, it's important to remember what's sort of anchored in this uh, limit. x is where we care about, and that's not going to change during the limit. What we need to do is look at the limit as the other argument approaches x. And if that limit exists, we declare this number to be the value of the derivative function at x. So here's our definition of derivative at x. So here's the limit we just looked at, if we let the other endpoint be called w. And there's another way to do this. We could just use a little parameter h, which tells us how far to step away from x. And then we'd be looking at the limit as h goes to 0. So we'll call this the h form. And let's just call this the other form. And we're going to use both of these forms to calculate the derivative of a linear function officially. So this will be good practice. Our function is uh, linear, f of x equals mx plus b. And we're going to set up the other form. So f prime of x should be this limit. Now, we're going to carefully substitute the uh, values of f of x and f of w using our formula. So that's going to be mx plus b and mw plus b, respectively. Now we're going to get a little cancellation. And we'll point out that we can't uh, evaluate this limit naively. We can't just let w be x because the numerator and the denominator will both be 0. That's an indeterminate form, and we know that we have to wrestle around with this to try to put it into an algebraic form where we can evaluate the limit easily. Well, we'll factor out the m, and now we see there's actually like factors in the numerator and the denominator that we can cancel, and so we're really looking at the limiting value of a constant function m, so that limit has to be m just as we expected. Now it's good practice to try the h form as well. So here we go. We're going to substitute in f of x plus h and f of x. So that's going to be respectively m times the quantity x plus h plus b, and then mx plus b. We'll just expand out the left-hand side in the numerator a little bit. 
And now there's cancellation all over the place. And in fact, mh over h, the h's cancel. And then once again, we have the limit of a constant function as h goes to zero, that limiting value is h. And we get exactly what we expected. The derivative of a linear function mx plus b is just m. So let's look at, at some examples. Um, when you see something like 13x minus five and you wanna take the derivative with respect to x, well, you should instantly, I mean, no hesitation, you know that that derivative is 13. Derivative of this linear function is just negative seven. Derivative of this linear function, it looks a little more exotic, but that derivative is just pi. So these are all derivatives you should be able to do uh, instantly. And there's a special case if the slope of the original line is zero, which is to say the original function is a constant function, then the derivative is the constant zero function. In other words, the derivative with respect to x of a constant function is zero. It's such an easy idea, but somehow in the heat of the moment when you're looking at actual problems, you can tend to forget this. Um, in certain cases, it's pretty easy to remember. So the derivative of any one of these constant functions is of course zero. Sometimes constants are a little more hidden. So any one of these expressions is just the expression of a number, a constant as a function of x. And so these derivatives are all zero. So don't get fooled into doing something fancy when you can just invoke the fact that the derivative of a constant function is zero.